Hello my friends, welcome to my corner. As you may know, it's a very difficult task to give a gift to a book lover. It seems like a simple thing, right? Because you say, okay, the guy, the girl reads, I'll just give him or her a book, right? Well, it really depends on how particular this person is about the things that they read or do not read. About three years ago, somebody sent me a copy of The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. Los Peligros de Fumar en la Cama. And I was like, oh my god. Okay, uh, I'll be honest with you, that was my reaction, because I have a rather unfair tendency to shun anything that is immensely popular, okay? And I want to say, I do not do this just with a certain type of book. It's not like, oh, okay, it's a bestseller, I, I don't want to read that. This is one of the reasons why I have not read, still have not read, The Lord of the Rings. Okay, so I do it with everything. If, if everybody is like flocking to, to read a book, then I, I'll probably uh, not read it. But anyway, um, a gift is a gift, you know? I mean, there, there was that one time that somebody gave me a copy of The Da Vinci Code in Spanish. What? You know, that, that still kind of makes me cringe and, and I have not read it, I'll be honest with you. But as I said, you know, a gift is a gift and, and we should be thankful. Now, fast forward three years, okay? Uh, I'm putting together a list of essentials of Argentine literature. So I was like, okay, I need to read Mariana Enriquez. Okay, I just need to do it. And you know what? I will say this. I really enjoyed this book. So that proved to me that I am sometimes unfair when it comes to, you know, putting aside things that are very, very popular. And I enjoyed it so much that I even, uh, you know, want to read more by Mariana Enriquez. And um, more than that, I managed to find a copy of her first novel which has just been republished in Spanish. Bajar es lo peor, um, coming down is the worst part. That would be my quick translation of the title. I don't know what title it will have in English or if it will be translated into English. It probably will. Uh, but I'm reading this right now and I'm enjoying it as well. So, you know, that's my little story on how I came to enjoy a book that I had, you know, decided basically not to read uh, at first. So what we have here is a collection of 12 short stories, okay? There are no novellas here. All of the stories in this collection may be described as horror stories, okay? So keep that in mind. This is a, a genre-driven type of a collection. So what will you find here? You will find, you know, ghosts primarily, but also the occult, uh, trauma, psychological trauma, dark obsessions, but also social commentary and symbolic or allegorical elements too. I read it in Spanish, as you can see by the edition of the book that I have, but it is also available in English in a wonderful translation by Megan McDowell. Okay, Megan McDowell uh, published many, many important authors of Latin American literature, especially like Southern Cone. She has translated um, Samantha Schweblin, Alejandro Sambra, Juan Emar, okay, an author that needs more attention, if you ask me, uh, and many others. But uh, that's just to give you an idea. And the, the edition in English of The Dangers of Smoking in Bed was published last year, I believe, 2021. So this is Enriquez's first collection of short stories, okay? Uh, it's about 200 pages long in the Spanish edition. So, you know, we're looking at maybe an average of 16 pages to a short story. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a quick assessment and quick information about the short stories individually. And then uh, at the end, I will tell you, you know, what I think about the collection. And I will also give you my top three stories from the collection. So the first story that we have here is Angelita Unearthed, okay? El Desentierro de la Angelita in Spanish. And this is a ghost story about a girl who accidentally disinters the corpse of a baby who had died many years before. If you ask me, I would say that this is primarily a story about empathy. Okay, that is the main theme uh, that I found here. But it is also about how the past can live on, right? How the past is still present in the present, you know? So it's a really nice way uh, to start this collection. It really sets the tone for it. After that, we have Our Lady of the Quarry. Okay, and the title in Spanish, I will give you the original ones just in case, is La Virgen de la Tosquera. The main theme here is jealousy. So we have a story about jealousy. 
in which a group of girls cannot understand why uh, a certain guy is attracted or more interested in their older and less attractive uh, friend. Okay, friend, I would, I would say between quotation marks in this case. So at the center of the story, we have the icon of the title, this Lady of the Quarry, right? It's a, it's a made up, you know, image. Um, and unlike the previous story, this is a cruel one. But it's good that we have a cruel story as story number two, because that also needs to set the tone for the collection. There are many cruel uh, tales in, in this collection by Mariana Enriquez. For this one, I found the last line of the story to be particularly effective. I, I really like that. You know, I, I like stories that have that last line that is very important, as in Edgar Allan Poe or as in Julio Cortázar, right? The third story that we have is El Carrito, or The Cart, okay? It's about a group of people who attack a poor old man who then leaves his cart behind. So the guy leaves, but for some reason the people in the neighborhood continue to feel his presence, right, in devastating ways. Some elements in this story reminded me of J.G. Ballard, who understood, among other things, how fragile what we call civilization can be. So there is that slight element of that there. But the story can also be interpreted as an indictment of social inequality. So, as you know, horror is often both allegorical and literal. And this story, I think, is a good example or a good illustration of that ambiguity of the genre. Story number four is The Well, or El Aljibe, okay? And this is a tale about trauma. That's the main uh, component of the story. And basically it tells you the story of a girl who, after a childhood visit to a witch, a bruja, as she is called in Spanish, uh, she suffers from extreme phobias, right? Phobias that, that basically absorb her life completely. They do not let her live. But the women who accompanied her on, these, on this visit are somehow not affected, you know, not affected at all. So there's an element of mystery there. She does not understand how, you know, it is that she has all these phobias and is unable to function. But the other women are okay. They're totally fine. So uh, at one point she decides to look for the logical and illogical, both at the same time, uh, solution to her problem. And that's when the story gets interesting. I really felt for the main character here, you know, especially after um, that final revelation. And this story is really important because it has a great element of local folklore slash superstition to it. So if you're looking for like the local element or local color, you will find it here in the well. Then uh, number five, we have Rambla Triste. Okay, the title is the same in Spanish and in English. Rambla because it takes place in Barcelona, of course, where a young Argentine woman is uh, staying with uh, some friends, a couple who are also from Argentina. And she experiences this uh, smell, this awful smell, right? Uh, in Barcelona in particular. She has conversations with uh, this couple and the conversations may or may not reveal the origin or, or the reason for this smell. As in many stories by Julio Cortázar, you will find that this one, uh, in, in this story, the explanation may be supernatural or it may be logical, okay? It's really up to you, the reader, to decide which option you're going to go with. Number six, we have The Lookout or El Mirador. This is uh, another ghost story, okay? Uh, many of the stories are ghost stories here. And this one takes place in a hotel. So um, at, po at points in the story, I was thinking about The Shining, of course. It's uh, almost inevitable to think about that. And in this story, a ghost is troubling or, or bothering a particularly fragile or troubled young woman. Uh, it's, you know, this ghost is pursuing this person. Now, the way the story is narrated makes you sympathize with the ghost at least to a certain extent. So what I like about this story is primarily the sense of perspective. We get the other side of the story and that makes it uh, unique and also compelling, okay? Uh, number seven is Where Are You, Dear Heart? or Donde Estas Corazón? This is a very dark tale. So if you like those dark stories, then this one is, uh, is gonna be for you. It's about a woman who has a heartbeat fetish. You know, she is particularly interested in the sounds that 
uh, deceased hearts produce. So it's really, really dark. And things get even darker when she finds the perfect match for her, like the perfect person that she is looking for. Honestly, uh, and this has a lot to do with me as a reader, maybe, it seems a little bit over the top to me, you know, personally. I like more um, subtle stuff, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I prefer. But as a dark horror story, it really, really works. So look out for this one. Next, we have number eight, which is meat or carne. Now, if you agree with me that the previous story is a little bit over the top, then wait until you read this one. Okay, uh, it's intense, it's maybe extreme, okay, but it's also a great comment on uh, hero worshipping, okay, in particular the worshipping of rock stars. So there is that element, as I told you before, some of these stories can be read both literally and allegorically or symbolically. Uh, in this story, two fans take their admiration a little bit too far. Okay, that, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to let you experience this story. It's one of the shortest in, uh, in the book um, for yourself. Number nine is um, Ni cumpleaños ni bautismos. Okay, no birthdays or baptisms. In which two uh, jaded young adults who met in a chat room decide to put an ad in the paper saying that they specialize in quote-unquote weird films. Okay? That leads them to Marcela, a young woman who swears that she uh, sees some kind of a presence in her room. Okay, so we have a very interesting situation here. This tale is also morbid, okay, but uh, the problems that it describes or that it talks about are, are very real. So that's something that makes the story, you know, um, work in a, in a very um, shattering kind of way because you, you know that what is being talked about here, even though it is morbid, is, is all too real for some people, unfortunately. I really liked in this one the element of video, right? This idea that you can film something. Of course, I'm, I'm a film buff, so I, I loved that uh, little element of the story. Number 10 is titled Kids Who Come Back, okay? Chicos Que Faltan. This one is uh, an excellent story, I, I will say, from the, from the very beginning. And I just realized, kids who come back, it's like chicos que faltan, it's like kids who are missing. The, the title in, in Spanish is, is different, I just realized that. The protagonist of this story works uh, and is in charge of the file on um, children and adolescents who have disappeared. Okay? And she has a friend who is a journalist who is interested in the same topic. She, uh, he investigates. The, these uh, disappearances or these missing persons type of uh, stories. So at one point the boys and the girls begin to show up, okay, just uh, as if by magic, but there is something there that is not quite right. So very interesting situation here. It's a, it's a brilliant story really about the permanence of those who are gone, okay. Uh, I, I thought of the X-Files, of course, I thought of the Twilight Zone because there are elements there that kind of you know, uh, are reminiscent of those TV series. I would say this story is Enriquez at her best. And this one is the longest story in the collection. It's 23 pages long only. So you can see the stories here are not that long. Number 11 is the title story, okay? The dangers of smoking in bed. Los peligros de fumar en la cama. It's the shortest one at only six pages in length. And it traces a woman's reaction to the death of a neighbor, uh, a disabled elderly uh, woman who died after falling asleep while smoking. Okay, uh, Enriquez's characters really uh, like to play with fire. Okay, fire is a is a common element. Her other collection of stories is called Things We Lost in the Fire. You know, so sometimes that happens literally, uh, as you will see. It's not one of the best stories in the collection, but um, it, it's memorable, and the title really works, you know, as, as a title for the, for the whole uh, book. So I really like that. And finally, uh, story number 12 is Back When We Talked to the Dead, Cuando Hablábamos con los Muertos, okay? This one is, the premise is very simple. There are five girls who communicate with the dead by using a Ouija board. Uh, it's a great conclusion to the book. I'm not going to give you a lot of details about it. The only thing that I will say is that it makes clear and precise reference 
to events that happened in Argentina in the late 1970s. So there is a connection there with reality, and not only with reality, but more specifically with history. You know, so you can see the connection there and the commentary on social issues, political issues, etc., etc. So, uh, what's the bottom line here? My assessment of this collection of stories. My favorites, I will tell you in this order. Okay, my absolute favorite was Kids Who Come Back. Okay, I really liked that story. Then, back when we talk to the dead, that would be number two. And for number three, I have The Well. Those were my favorites from the collection. Enriquez has been compared to Shirley Jackson, very aptly, okay, and also to Julio Cortázar, but I would also add the, maybe, you know, a, a little bit of an influence there from the great Uruguayan author Horacio Quiroga, who was great at portraying the grotesque in some of his stories. And also, of course, I see the influence of Stephen King. You know, it's very difficult not to make that connection. At points, I was also reminded of the Susan Hill novel, The Woman in Black. If you've seen the movie or read the book, there is an element of that in the ghost stories sometimes, so uh, that is good. Before I tell you what I liked about this collection, uh, let me tell you what I didn't like. I did not really like the sensationalist element that you can find in some of these tales. But then, at the same time, I do have to keep in mind that this is horror, you know, it's horror, so that is going to be present there. It's kind of a given, you know, so I do understand that. Now, uh, Enriquez's world is a traumatized world. It's a masochistic world also. It's a world haunted by the ghosts of the inescapable past, you know, and also a world that is bursting with dark secrets that are desperate to reveal themselves. It's a, a very, you know, memorable and a very haunted place. I think the strength of this collection lies in the fact that Enriquez understands that short stories really hinge on the concept of revelation. You know, you need some kind of a revelation and she knows how to work with that revelation and how to keep you turning the pages. So having read this collection of stories, I do want to explore her work um, further. As I said before, I want to read her other stories from Things We Lost in the Fire. No connection to the movie, by the way. Then her first novel, which I am reading right now, which has just been republished. And also uh, her novel Nuestra Parte de Noche, which won the very prestigious Herralde Prize. You know, I, I like the premise of that novel, so I will uh, most probably check it out also and look out for maybe my comments on her first novel, because I may share those at least in a short video. So, a uh, great collection of stories, you know, I uh, highly recommend it. Uh, Enriquez is really an author that we must read from Argentine Letters, one of the, you know, most important authors that Argentina has at this point. So, um, if you have read the, some of the stories or some of her work, uh, please let me know. I would really like to hear your comments. And if you have any questions, recommendations, as usual, you know that I always enjoy hearing about those. So, this is my, uh, just my assessment, my two cents on Mariana Enriquez's Los Peligros de Fumar en la Cama. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day.